So research perspective, we've been starting, we started off with lettuce. Down in the bottom section here, we've started to repeat some of the research work that's been done at Urban Barns, specifically to see as we're changing some of our LED lighting systems, how those will be impacted. So we've started off with these new intercanopy lighting systems, which you can kind of see through the light system here. So instead of the overhead lighting, we have intercanopy lighting, and so we have multiple stages of these is what the plan is as we start to move forward. And then because they're now coming in at a horizontal level, instead of the downward model that is the overhead lighting, we end up wanting to see how the plants react differently. Um, plan for the newer unit is that there'd be multiple stages of these. And so if we go up to 20 feet tall uh, or higher in height, direct overhead lighting is not possible anymore. And so we have to figure out a way that we can still provide the light all the way to the very bottom of the chamber as well as the top. So our solution is to come up with these intercanopy lighting systems that would go down. So potentially three, five, or six, or seven, whatever is required to meet those requirements. We've also started growing some chives here. Uh, I believe this is some kale. Oh, actually bok choy option here. We have some kale that's growing right here. Um, these should be peppers or tied. Actually, yeah, that's a pepper right there. So we have some peppers that we're trying to grow. Um, we have some larger peppers that are already to the fruiting stage that you can see here, and there's another one over there. And so they're producing the flowers and then fruiting, and then we're figuring out how much yield we can get out of these things um, cycling through this. We've started to grow some tomato plants. So here's some small micro tina tomato plants, and they'll have little fruits that will start to form on them hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Dill is here. Um, some repeating some of our basil work. These are two different basils that we're working on here. So different strawberries that are actually growing on the system. And we've had some flowers and some fruit. So if you want to zoom in here, you can actually see a little fruit that's starting to form right there. It's actually starting to turn red. So tomorrow we'll probably be able to eat it. One of our goals is, is to go to an automated watering system. So as this tray comes past, it would actually supply enough water for the tray properly instead of just giving it the same burst for every single tray. So we can actually regulate the amount of water. And then the next step after that is to be able to control the amount of nutrients that they're getting also. So to, uh, strawberries need a little bit less nutrients than some of the peppers or the tomato plants do, and so we can actually regulate the nutrients based on what they want. So not just a lighting regime that we can control, but we can potentially control all these factors as it moves around through the system. From an engineering standpoint, we've been doing some other fun little things. So we've been actually building these trays, so you can see the coil system that we built on this. So as the plants start getting larger for the, for the strawberries, the tomatoes, and other parts, we need to have some mechanism to actually control how much, um, uh, control the plant so it doesn't flop out outside of this tray system. So another one of our designs is this V-trough system. So you can have a larger plant, um, such as the pepper plant that we were seeing before, and you can place it in here. So if it starts to flop over, it actually just rests up against the side of this. And then we have a third one that we're in the process of making, which is gonna have a trellis system. So there'll be a wire that runs down through the very center of these things. So these are all kind of different sizes and shapes that we can possibly show off um, and will be utilized in the larger urban barns unit when it gets to that stage. One of the things that we've been doing with uh, the watering system is right now we're just running it from a primary tank, which is the large tank that you see over there, to the smaller reservoir, which is right down here. And then you can see the line that actually comes across. So we have a float valve in there so we can maintain the water level. By having this mixture of plants, we're uptaking both the amount of nutrients that need to be uptaked as well as the amount of water, and the, we're kind of just estimating in between. And as I said before, the amount of nutrients that we want to provide each plant is probably different as they get older, and so we need to be able to shift to that. But one of our other earlier challenges is as the water gets recycled, so it actually gets dropped into the tray here, flows across, and then when it finishes its full loop around, it will dump it back into the tray. If there's any disease issue in any of these plants in the roots, that would actually contaminate every single set of plants that's in there, and we don't want that to happen. What we did was we added a, a UV light system. So this guy right here, so this comes off of our primary water pump, comes through here, and we're able to do a UV treatment to the water so it becomes clean, and then can flow out of this thing, and then can supply the water. So any disease that would be hanging out in the primary tank there would not be making it all the way back for future, future plants. From McGill's perspective, it's allowing us to do this training of students, such as Lucas, which is a PhD student. We have a number of other students that are working on this. We're still working on the substrate, so we're working on the Rockwell cubes, but we're also working on other um, rooting media, hemp-based, cotton-based, um, coconut core-based fibers to see whether or not those things work, as well as doing further work on the LED lights, figuring out how the wavelengths and the photo period and the intensity all interact with the plant. Um, that kind of gives you a quick summary of everything that we've been doing here at McGill for Urban Barns as part of the NSERC CRD project.